Mario. And over the years, the Razorbacks and Longhorns have played some of college football's most memorable games, featuring some legendary names. The two programs have captured one-third of all the titles in Southwest Conference history. They've combined for four national championships. I also want to say that having seen this game, what convinced me that Texas deserves that is the fact that you won a tough one. We're seen to be behind 14 to nothing, and then not to lose the school and to go on the win. That proves you deserve to be number one, and that's what you are. Today, we expect a sold-out house at War Memorial Stadium for the final shootout between the Longhorns and the Razorbacks. And for those of us who grew up in the days when this rivalry produced not only Southwest Conference champions, but national champions on a regular basis, it's a little hard to get used to the idea that this is it for Texas and Arkansas after today. And you can make the argument that Texas now has bigger rivals in Oklahoma and Texas A&M, and that the Arkansas players will get up to play their new rivals in the SEC. Dave, you can also make the argument that if there's a loser as we lose this rivalry after today, it's the Arkansas fans who will no longer have Texas to hate and to enjoy beating. Well, that's absolutely correct, Dave. College football is really changing. The rivalries that have stood for so many years, Pitt, Penn State, Florida, and Miami, and of course this Arkansas-Texas rivalry are banishing. And it's hard for me to realize that the Arkansas Razorbacks will have rivalries like LSU, Mississippi State, and Tennessee. That's just hard to believe. Well, they're going out in style so far in their final year in the SWC. They are a surprising leader at 3-0 in the conference, 4-2 and overall. This is the same team, for the most part, that was 3-8 and with no defense last year. How have they turned it around this year? Well, really in two ways. First of all, they play a much greater and aggressive defense. They're intercepting the ball a lot more. They, if you took away every play that they had over 50 yards last year, they would have been undefeated. And the second is the reason is the emergence of a freshman quarterback named Jason Allen. The Texas quarterback, of course, Peter Gardere, and though he has caught some flack in his career, there's one thing he has always managed to do, and that is beat Oklahoma and beat Arkansas. He is unbeaten against those two rivals as a starter. The Texas coaches think that if he's made mistakes this year, it's because he has tried to take too much on his own shoulders without the caches and without Johnny Walker to throw to this year. If that's the case, more pressure than ever on his shoulders sure. today. A lot of pressure this week, especially with all the injuries at running back. We look for a totally revamped offense for Texas today. Gardere will have a one-back offense, triple wide receivers, a lot more motion, a lot more to pick up, and of course, as you say, a lot more pressure on Peter Gardere. This rivalry goes all the way back to 1894 and surprisingly one-sided. 54-18 Texas. Texas the only conference opponent with a series advantage over the Hogs, and this game has decided eight Southwest Conference championships. It may turn out to be the same in 1991. We'll have the kickoff between the Hogs and the Horns when we come back. Enter the Prime Network Golf Getaway Sweepstakes, and you could be one of four lucky winners of a fantastic trip for two to Ennisbrook, Florida's premier golf destination. Your ultimate golf experience will include luxurious accommodations for four days and three nights, plus two rounds of championship golf on any of Ennisbrook's three top-rated courses. To enter, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Prime Network's Golf Getaway, P.O. Box 140219, Irving, Texas. Winner will be announced December 2nd, so enter today. 
one step at a time, General Nutrition Centers can help maximize your performance. Take the first step to run faster, build a better body, take another step, and another. With Phase 1, the complete bodybuilding system designed specifically for the beginner and intermediate athlete. If you're serious about bodybuilding, start with Cybergenics Phase 1. General Nutrition has the nutritional fuel to help you to the top. GNC, the authority in sports nutrition products. There's a showdown coming in the Southwest Conference. When the smoke clears, a posse will be on the hunt for the taste of SWC cotton. The Wacker Gang's packing a triple shoot, but Sheriff Joe and Deputy Dobson are a part of the cotton trade. Horny toads and bars shoot it out. Next weekend on Prime Network, available on most Prime affiliates. Capacity is 53,000 plus, and that's what we have at War Memorial Stadium. Very breezy conditions, and it is cool. Really great autumn weather. 59 degrees, and a 10 to 15 mile an hour breeze out of the northeast. Should be a major factor. Ted Barnhill will kick for Texas. And Arkansas with Ron Dickerson, the deep man near the goal line. The win behind Barnhill's boot, and it will sail about two yards deep, but Dickerson will take it back and barely reach the 17-yard line. Jason Allen, the freshman redshirt quarterback, who took over after Gary Adams had the, the first shot at the quarterback position for Arkansas, and Allen has proved to be the man they thought he would be out of Edmond, Oklahoma. And along with him, the NCNB Arkansas starting offense. Kirk Botkin starting for the injured Lindy Lindsay at tight end. Dickerson and Caldwell, Speedy, Whitehouse, Jackson, and Price in the backfield. Oliver under the gun today because he lines up opposite Shane Drunette for Texas. Dickerson in motion. And out of the eye, Allen right to the air to Dickerson and out of his hands. Lance Scott had fallen down. Dickerson had some room had he held on. The Texas defensive unit. Probably the best front four in the nation. They seem to prove that against Oklahoma. Patton, the Sports Illustrated Defensive Player of the Week in the nation for his performance. Anthony Curl had 14 tackles against the Sooners last week. And in the secondary, Lance Gunn leads the DBs with 30 tackles, 10 against Oklahoma. Right out, flip right. And Caldwell in motion on second and ten. This is E.D. Jackson. And the junior from Kilgore buried. Girl came up quickly along with Drunette. Dave, the Southwest Airlines team must for Arkansas. What do you mean by don't lose it in the first quarter? Well, first of all, Arkansas has been outscored 48 to 14 in the first quarter. Texas has only allowed 13 points in the last three quarters. Arkansas's offense must mix up their attack pass on first downs and run on that third and fourth and field position return yardage and field goals could play a huge difference in this football game they still need 10 this is third down two tight ends in Allen under some pressure incomplete intended for Botkin and the Texas defense holds pressure came from Bo Robinson at right end Texas is going to get great field position, Dave. They should get the ball at, at least midfield. Boy, how many games have they called on their defense to come out, stop them, and give them that great field position? Rather with that 83-yarder, he is 11th in the nation at nearly 43 yards per kick. He'll kick to Grady Cadman. And the Horns play for the return. A very low wobbler. And it's Cadman from the 36. 47-yard boot and a five-yard return for Grady Cabinets. The Horns do have outstanding field position as Peter Gardere, the junior from Houston Lee, prepares to go to work. Only one touchdown and the four interceptions have uh, put him again under the gun, drawing an awful lot of fire from Texas fans. Derek Duke has been his favorite receiver, 14 catches, and they go with three wideouts. Phil Brown, the lone setback in the banged-up backfield. Chuck Johnson back after he missed the Oklahoma game with a sprained ankle. That lone setback 
Brown banging off the right side, and he is up near midfield. Give him about eight yards on first down. Darwin Ireland, the weak side linebacker on the tackle. Brown, the sophomore from Commerce, Texas. And the Arkansas defensive front was college football's answer to Lazarus. Mackenzie Phillips, whose career seemed over. He has come back. He has had a history of asthma problems. Ty Mason for the injured Mick Thomas, the Arkansas tackling leader at middle linebacker. And Michael James with four interceptions, two against Houston last week to seal the Hogs' surprising win over the Cougars. Lamore went in motion. Brown again right side, and he slips at the line of scrimmage. Flag is down. Brown was the ball carrier. Fell down at the 40. self tackleization as Daryl Royal used to call that. And we'll wait for the indication. Against the horns. Signaled by Lloyd Dale. Boy, and that's not what you want to do when you're in a second down and two situation to get a holding call. And along with Dale, the rest of his crew. He discussed the option with Ty Mason. They had held Brown to no gain, but it would set up third and two if they pass up the penalty. McWilliams in his fifth year at Texas, four and one against Arkansas. That includes the 86 season when he coached Texas Tech. Holding offense for three second down. Not sure what they were deciding there. You got to take that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Have to take that. If not, it's going to be third down about two. And you know, Texas can probably, well, almost assuredly pick up two yards on, on one down. Neil McLemore and Derek Duke, all wide left. On second and 12. And it's play action for Gardere. He had McLemore. He'll keep. And he'll have the first down at the Arkansas 42. 18 yards for Gardere before Curtis Banks buried him. First down, Texas. Great play action into the line. It held the linebackers. And when Gardere came out, he was wide open. A heads-up call by him to pull the ball down and run for the first down. What are the Texas must today? Well, first of all, forget about OU. After an emotional win last week, many times there's a letdown. So far this year, deep Texas defense has been their best offensive weapon. 5 of 11 touchdowns directly the result of a defense and they have got to have the same play out of Patton and his army. That is Henry Ford. Sophomore from Fort Worth starting for James Mallett at defensive end, and he read Phil Brown's cut perfectly. He certainly did. It's, it's really important that you stop the, at the ball at the line of scrimmage. Look at that nice tackle. Good wrap-up. Get those arms around, smack them down. That, can, that really can juice up your defense when you're out there. Brown lost one, second and 11. Now again, Texas from the one back, we expect to see Butch had not Adrian Walker, maybe Roderick Walker, but we don't expect to see much of their traditional two-back set. Gardere, too tall for McLemore. Michael James came up from behind. And Dave, if Gardere has had a mechanical problem throughout his career, he tends to be wild high. Why is that? Well, he just doesn't deliver the ball strong sometimes. One of the real matchups we're going to watch is against Ford there. That's Alan Luther, 65. He pushes him way out. Now, got his hand up in that face mask. And they're tangled up. They're going to go with a battle today. So third and 11. He's still about equal on third down this year. Blitz comes, Gardere protection, and incomplete between Thrift and McLemore, and it'll be fourth down. That also was great coverage by Arkansas on that play, Dave. They had a double wide out, just doing both doing curls, one a little bit deeper than the other one, and Gardere was not able to drive the ball in there. Kelly McClanahan is the Texas punter, a junior from Houston Memorial who has had decent numbers. Michael James has had superb numbers. He is the second leading punt returner in the nation. 18.7 yards per return with a long of 56 this year. And bravely passes up the fair catch on this one. And again, Arkansas will be deep in its own end of the field after a 33-yard boot. We are nothing, nothing in Little Rock when we come back. Hi, I'm Susie of Video Magazine. Would you like to get a free trial issue of video? 
there's a whole new world of exciting video products on the market. Camcorders, VCRs, and TVs. But which one is best for you? Month after month, Video Magazine lets you in on the hottest camcorders and coolest VCRs. The latest and the greatest. Where the buys are and which movies are worth watching. Secrets of professional shooting and how to get the most out of your dollars. Act now and get our annual camcorder issue, special awards issue, and full preview issue. All devoted to state-of-the-art new products. You can try Video Magazine risk-free by calling the number on your screen now. You'll receive the magazine on a free trial basis. If you decide to subscribe, it's just $9.97 for 11 more issues. That's 66% off the newsstand price. Call 1-800-845-6043 to get your free trial issue. That's 1-800-845-6043. These are the machines of the 90s. Fuel injection, overhead cam, molly valve. Today's high-tech engines demand high-tech protection. Pendle motor oil is specifically designed to provide the ultimate protection against heat and wear under the most extreme conditions. Don't take a chance with your high-tech engine. Use Kendall motor oil, formulated to protect your high-tech engine. Kendall motor oil, pour in the protection. Kendall, available at these locations. Nothing, nothing early on at War Memorial Stadium. Some Texas coach really summed up what it feels like to come to this place as we check the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. He says it is like parachuting into the Kremlin. The only other place you'd see this much red. New tailback is Tony Jeffrey. He will alternate with Jackson and Freddie Bradley at the Arkansas tailback spot. Junior from St. Louis is the Arkansas rushing leader this year. And we're pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. 11-15 and counting in a scoreless first quarter at Wall Memorial Stadium. In the last shootout, Texas and Arkansas not scheduled to meet, not that they put each other, but it won't happen in the near future. Allen over the middle, nice reaching grab by Botkin, and he fights for first down yardage. But this has got to help Arkansas to be able to move that ball out of way deep in your territory. They were right in his face. That's just a great catch. Botkin, who didn't think he was going to start today, comes down with a big reception. Eighth catch of the year. In there for Lindsay, who has an ankle problem and was limited against Houston last week because of that ankle. Fake was to the fullback Calvin. The pitch is to Jeffrey, and the Horns, year in, year out, about as good a defensive team against the option as you'll find in the country. Well, you're good when you have a linebacker like Patchett that can run down the line like that, and when he puts those clamps on you, I mean he doesn't let you get another inch. Oklahoma, a lot of people expected to throw the ball against Texas last week. They went very conservative after they got the 7-0 lead, and they seem to forget that Texas is almost never fooled by the option. Year in, year out, that's the case. Jeffrey got two, second and eight. Allen with room on the roll. Complete Tracy Caldwell. record 25 grabs for the speedster from Pine Bluff and speaking of records Jason Allen has the Arkansas passing freshman record and that's an interesting move to automatically come out on that rollout to get outside of that pressure if they're able to hold Drenet and keep him inside and flank him outside they'll have all day to pass so this drive which began on their nine now out across the 35 and again rolling Allen this time incomplete too low for Caldwell. As a passing team this year, Arkansas at the bottom in the Southwest Conference, but that reflects the first couple of games where Gary Adams was the quarterback and they used a true freshman, Doyle Preston. Since Allen has taken over that position, they're respectable. They're, they're never going to wow anybody through the air, but it's hard to imagine them losing too many games because they simply can't pass, as was the case earlier. Caldwell out, Vincent Davis, true freshman from Birmingham, Alabama. 
is his replacement. Jeter almost offsides. Jeffrey on the draw. Hatton met him head on along with Curl and Powell, and he reaches the 42. And it'll be third and five. They actually, Mark Henry really made a mistake on this play. He's the center. When they jump off sides, you got to snap the ball. If not, you allow him to get back right there. He should snap that ball, and right now it's a free five yards. He lets them get back. They did pick up some yardage, but that's a free five yards. Extra tight end again. Eric Browning replacing Jeffrey on third down. Caldwell, almost. It was knocked away by Barry. And Barry had been beaten. Oh, Barry had been beaten, but what a recovery by him. When you try to come inside on that wide receiver, you can't put your hands on him. And that's what he did so well. He didn't put his hand on the receiver. He just steps inside. Look, no hands on him, and just tips the ball away. Great play by Mark Barry. That's either a great play or six. <laughs> there there is no in-between. They hold the Hogs. Kavna stands at his 25. Rather under pressure that time by Wilbur Dine. Big Arkansas bounce. Kavna says it didn't touch him, and it will be a touchback. Mighty close. Kavna barely got out of the way. We're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Watching Prime Network. High School Game of the Week is a doubleheader on Monday, October 21st. Game 1 at 3.30 finds Oviedo at Lake Hell, and at 6.30, the Seminoles from Sanford head south to tackle Edgewater's Eagles on CV-16. Getting hitched is easy when you see David's Trailers, your one-stop sales, service, and parts headquarters for all your trailer needs. At David's Trailers, you'll find trailers from the industry leader, Wells Cargo, everything from auto to concession and gooseneck to utility, with Central Florida's largest selection of trailers, from custom-designed to flatbeds to boat trailers. David's Trailers is meeting your needs with quality products and service. David's Trailers, conveniently located at 4300 West Colonial Drive. Phone 293-2922. But Sheriff Joe and Deputy Dobson are part of the cotton trade. Horny toads and bars shoot it out. Next weekend on Prime Network, available on most Prime affiliates. Dave, this could have been a critical mistake. Look how close the ball came to Cavanis on that play. Did that touch his left hand? It, it sure seemed looks like a higher arc. I bell. thought it did. I really did. I thought it did. Now, they were trying to keep the ball from going in the end zone. They did come down and recover it, but the official ruled that it had not touched him. Well, he's obviously closer than we are, but that ball seemed to take a little higher hop after it passed. The left hand of Cavnis. Break for Texas first and ten at their 20. Adrian Walker for Brown as he goes in motion. Gardair looks the other way. Brought in by Kenny Neal. Nice grab for the sophomore from Memphis. His eighth catch of the year. And he's tackled by Michael James. Texas has needed someone besides Derek Duke to develop at wide receiver. That's one of the things that Lynn Amity said to us yesterday. He said, we have got to get away from going to Derek Duke every situation when it's at one of those critical third downs. He likes the potential of Neal, who's big, 6'3", 198. Macklemore is a high school hurdles champion, but so far they are just potentially good. They're not there yet. Guard there, audibleizing, tough to do with the crowd noise. Caught Derek Duke to the 39-yard line. Coming into this game, Texas had 12 third-down conversions passing. Seven of those 12 had been to Duke. 
Howard Air gets a lot of call. Now, there's the call. That's the tap of the hat. That means an audible call. Whatever the formation is dictates it. And Gardere, Gardere really delivers a strike on that, on that particular throw. Adrian Walker's first carry left side. And about three or four. Tyrone Chapman chased him out, the strong side linebacker. The Arkansas defense, the worst in their history last year. And no great shakes this year, seventh of the conference. But the one thing they're doing is they're stopping the bleeding on those big, debilitating gains that people were hitting him with constantly last year. Side blocked from Shea Shafee, and that gives him first down yardage up near midfield as Curtis Banks, the strong safety, makes the tackle. Texas Tech Athletic Director T. Jones quarterback Texas back in the early 50s. We asked him recently when the rivalry between Texas and Arkansas got so intense. Oh, Dave, I think it was a distinct change of particularly when I saw uh, Coach Raw come in in 1957 and then Frank Burrow's entry into Arkansas and as the years developed and the rivalry began to push itself, I guess you'd say, because both had done very, very well in the one-loss column. Uh, it got to be a state rivalry type thing. Uh, conference championship races, national championship on the line. Uh, that's uh, kind of when it all started to happen. ball as they unpile it at the 45 yard line. Ray Lee Johnson here. Gardere starts to flush and the ball just looked like it just got ripped out of his hand. Just one of those inadvertent swipes and the ball came off his leg. Looked like Johnson caused it. Might have been Scott Long who covered it and tack on personal foul Texas. Now, I want to tell you, if that doesn't give your offense momentum, nothing will. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. Arkansas began their first drive at their 17, their second drive at their 11, and see if he gets a little leg whipping in here. Right there. That's on Jeff Boyd. That is the right guard, Jeff Boyd. Allen pump fake. Dickerson for the touchdown. any better than they just oh, did. Boy. That's the old fake out and up. What you do is you come down fake hard, the quick pass, and then go long. High snap. Gary Adams handles it well, and Todd Wright makes it 7-0 Arkansas. What Allen did on this play is he faked the quick out like it's going to be a slip screen. Watch right here. Now fake right there. Now pull the ball down, and Dickerson is running down. He's just burned the secondary. Look how wide open he is. The safety tries to come over and make the tackle. That's Garza, but that's not his coverage. Right corner is Grady Kavnis, who was not even in the picture. Arkansas has made a habit of cashing in mistakes. They've done it here in the first quarter with 6.49 remaining. This have been scoring weapons this year. Arkansas hitting Dickerson one play after the fumble as Gardere was buried. And this year, the Arkansas defense responsible directly coming into this game for three touchdowns on the interception return, setting up three others by turnovers as they just did there. Lance Ellison's kick out of bounds. Todd Ringo well 
into the Texas bench. And uh, Texas will decide whether to take it there or make him kick all over again. I think you, you hit the key point. What a lift that is for a young quarterback like Allen and an offense that for Arkansas has uh, has been slow developing but is starting to show some signs of being good enough. Well, when you get field position like that, I can promise you, you run out there because the defense on the same, the defense and the offense on the same team compete all the time. They'll run out there and they'll say, defense gave us great position, let's score. And they did. Didn't take much on the drive, one play. And a catch by Dickerson for his second touchdown of the year. Illegal procedure by the kicking team. The ball was kicked out of bounds and being put in play from the 35. So now the duty for Texas, try and regroup emotionally. They had the field position, couldn't do anything with it. They'll get Butch Hadnot on the field for the first time. Third different running back in this one back set for Texas. Had not bothered all year by an ankle. And that won't make it feel any better. I want to tell you, he got snapped on this play. Looked like Kelly or the Phillips came in there. Watch him right here. Watch him snap back. Bam. Boy, that's a good hit. That is Mackenzie Phillips whose career seemed over. He had massive asthma problems, was clinically dead in his high school career on the playing field for 13 minutes. 33% normal lung capacity, new medicine, and he's back. Is he ever? Ireland making the tackle out of bounds on Derek Duke. The completion up to the 43, that brings up third and two. I want to tell you one thing about Gardera that I've noticed is he's throwing a lot with a lot more velocity on the ball. He's throwing just ropes in there, just straight line passes. Well, when we saw him in Fayetteville two years ago, he had 16 of 20 against Arkansas as a freshman, and he was splitting his receivers' numbers. He could not have been more accurate. He's had a hard time recapturing that magic in his career. Lamore in motion. Had not. With no room, Ray Lee Johnson brings him down. Well, at the point of attack, Johnson got great penetration. But had not got the ball out there, there was no corner to turn. And Johnson just exploded through there and made the tackle. Defensive stop for Arkansas. Brings us McClanahan again. And James at his 19-yard line. Remember, number two in the country in punt returning this year. For Dine ready. James got away. Ringo finally at the 40. turns into a 17-yard return for Michael James. Arkansas Athletic Director Frank Broyles coached 19 games against Texas. At what point did he realize beating Texas was so important to the state of Arkansas? I guess the first big Texas game that, that uh, I realized how important it was to the players in Arkansas was when we won in 1960. And uh, when I went in the dressing room, all the players were crying. The fans outside the dressing room were crying. What are we crying about? We beat Texas. So we arrived at the airport uh, in Fayetteville. The two DC-3s couldn't taxi off the runway because the students ran to the airplane to congratulate the team. And we deplaned out at the end of the runway and walked back to the, uh, to the terminal. That was a special game for us. It was the first win of our, my career, or our team's career, over Texas. And so the first one is always the best. He knew the highs. He also knew the lows. And there's some game films he still has not watched. It was just too painful, particularly the 69 shootout. In completion was to Dickerson. Kerwin Price bangs up the middle. The senior fullback from East St. Louis, Illinois. We'll bring up third and about five. Oh, 
one thing you want to, you don't want to do right now if you're Jason Allen is make a mistake. You've got so much momentum going for you. Your defense has played great football so far. Your offense has been able to score a third and five situation. A young quarterback, so a lot of times, they'll try to force the ball in there. That's the one thing that, going back to high school, the Arkansas coaches say he never did. Always played within his ability. And he's got protection on third and five. That's going to be picked off by Mark Berry, intended for Caldwell. Bubba Jacks with a huge block on Dickerson and a return of 12 yards for Mark Berry's third interception this year. Just as we said he can't do it, he did it. Well, what he did is he didn't deliver the ball in there strong. He really underthrew it and allowed Barry to catch it underneath. Now, watch this. You're not going to see a ball delivered strong. He throws it up, but it kind of he's falling back a little bit. And the result is, watch, when he falls back, he doesn't get all arm on it, and the ball just kind of floats. See Barry coming back. The ball's way underthrown. Momentum back to the orange and white. Gardere audibleizing to Duke and they continue to use what short yardage passes the Arkansas defense is allowing there at Duke. Jack Crow with a pointed word or two for his young quarterback. Well, what he's telling them is exactly what we were talking about. We had momentum, we were getting them, and you made a mistake. Duke got seven, second and three. Phil Brown back in and the one back rotation for Texas. And Gardeer will keep for the first down to the 43. Now he's run the ball well, but you got to know Lynn Amity's heart's in his throat every time he does that because Jimmy Sachs to the backup quarterback is not with the team. Add shoulder. He didn't even make the trip, as you said. And the backup is Chad Lucas, who took a lot of snaps this week in practice, but really hasn't taken a snap, especially with 60,000 people screaming at him. Amity is high on Lucas. He is big. He's got the strongest arm of the Texas quarterbacks. Linebacker mentality. He was recruited as a linebacker. 319 in the first. Brown weaving with the flag down to the 41-yard line. Well, you remember the old adage, don't block them if you can read their name? That's what happened on this play. When the tackle tried to turn out on the linebacker, there was just, he just, there was no way he could block them. Lawrence have had two key penalties. Personal foul on the fumble, clipping here. You see right there, there's no way you can block them. Boom, that's in the back, that's the clip. The flag comes in right there. Turk McDonald, the center. Clipping, offense, replay first down. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. That's a long way off. We have 312 in the first quarter, 7-0 Arkansas. And that is an area of play that Texas can't really afford. They just don't have the offensive firepower to make up for mistakes. Adrian Walker in for Brown. Neal and Duke left, McLemore right. Gardere on the screen to Adrian Walker. And Mick Thomas and Ty Mason combining at midfield along with Darwin Ireland. You know, Dave, we talked a lot about the changes on Arkansas's defense. They're playing a two-deep zone. See the two at the 35, 45-yard line? That's a two-deep zone, and they're bringing six men or five men underneath. Then as soon as the ball is thrown, everybody runs to it. That's the result. Good tackle. Not a lot of yardage. You'll give them that on, on first down and 25. You'll give them seven, eight yards. Brown back in for Walker. Oh, Duke somehow holds on as Michael James unloaded on him. I can tell you why Peter Gardere goes to Derek Duke, because he comes up with catches like that. Sticks it right in there, and James just stuck him hard, but good concentration by Duke to bring the ball in. James with four interceptions, making up for a miserable junior year, as is the entire Arkansas defense. They're making a lot of folks forget their problems in 90. This is Kenny Neal 
first down inside the 20. And that may be his biggest catch of the year. He goes for 26. Well, that time, Arkansas elected not to put a lot of pressure on Gardere. They ran wide. Look, nobody up there. And Gardere catches him coming across the middle. And it's just a seam pass. He's wide open. That's a choice I'm, I'm sure that the Arkansas defensive coaches would rather have back. His previous long grab was for 14 yards this year. And a great start for a guy who has at times been called Peter the Great. Reverse, McLemore drops it, covers it. Huge loss of 15. Lynn Amity told us yesterday they will get McLemore's speed involved on reverses, but Arkansas expected this all the way. Well, this is penetration that causes this problem, and look at it, Phillips. He's what really causes the problem. He was about eight yards deep in the backfield on that reverse. Son of Lloyd Phillips, former Arkansas two-time All-American, Outland Trophy winner. sure who that was intended for. He had Duke wide open. And uh, way over Duke's head, the nearest receiver is a guy we don't have a number for. We don't have a number 12 for Texas. Whoever he was, he didn't turn around, and it's third down. Twenty-five seconds in the first quarter. Gardere McLemore will be well short of the first. Only the original line of scrimmage at the 20 as James drags him down. That was Kevin Daniels, by the way, for Texas on that previous play. And with the clock rolling down, six seconds, Texas with the win behind them, but they will finally use a timeout. I was wondering whether they would notice that in time, and they stop it with one second. <laughs> Well, they have got to salvage something out of this drive to have first down. They had first down just about where they are right now, about the 19-yard line. Now they've got fourth down on the 20. And you have got to come away with points when your offense drives. In college football update. Period, Jason court. Post kicked against Oklahoma, made a field goal last week, but it was because Jason Ziegler had torn a hamstring. And Ziegler, the freshman redshirt from McKinney, back this week, and he will attempt the field goal. And boy, haven't we seen a difference this year with the more narrow goal post? 10% difference. I knew it would affect it, but I didn't know that it would affect it that much. The angles are much greater when you get closer in, and I imagine they must look like they're side by side when you're out there 40 or 50 yards trying to kick one. Arkansas has the conference record for most consecutive games scoring, 73 to 83. They scored in 125 straight. Texas closing the gap on that record, and they can get within two games if they score today. The NCAA record, by the way, is UCLA. They're at 232 and counting. Lucas will hold on a 37-yard attempt for Ziegler, who's 3 for 5 with a long of 44 this year. opportunity is going to be so big in this game and Texas just blew one and they still trail seven to nothing at the end of one the nothing at Little Rock back in 1962 number one Texas over number seven Arkansas seven to three the big play Arkansas fans to this day believe Danny Brabham scored before he fumbled on the goal line. Johnny Treadwell and Pat Culpepper hit him. And Tommy Ford scored the winning touchdown with 30 seconds left. And one of the many great ones in this rivalry dating back to 1894. Allen to Caldwell, belted out of bounds by Grady Kavnis. First down at the 34. 
I'll tell you one thing, this young quarterback, Jason Allen, being able to get outside that pressure of Texas is really having an effect on the secondary. His receivers are popping open. He's delivering the football to him, and his emotions are just going to continue to rise. Jack Crow said yesterday, there are no weaknesses in this Texas defense. If you look at them and, and look for something to exploit, you're not going to find it. So your only hope is keep them off balance. They have done that well so far. This is Lee Keith to the 40. Junior out of McAllister, Oklahoma, has his fourth grab of the year. Transfer from Oklahoma State, tackled by Michael Padgett. And here are the first quarter numbers. He play was the fumble by Gardere. Texas out gaining Arkansas almost two to one. Yet they trail on the touchdown pass of 30 yards to Dickerson. And the three penalties really hurt Texas also. The clip, the hold, and the other one. Four needed on second down. Fullback Carlton Calvin, a true freshman from Keller, Texas. Calvin has the football for Bloodlines the pointed him toward Fayetteville. He is the cousin of Quinn Grovey. Top high school fullback in Texas. A lot of recruiters thought last year. He got no more than two. Third and still two. Out goes Calvin Dickerson right. Caldwell left. And it's Dylan Price. First down. Texas territory. Gun on the tackle. Well, they got a great block on James Patton that time. He's really their leader. Number 92. They just take him right out. He takes the outside. They come up inside him. And Patton is just looking at the play going by. Well, what a game he had last week. He didn't play like that today, right on that play. Pat last week caused a fumble, two sacks. Of course, the main fumble he caused was returned by Bubba Jacks for the touchdown. Tony Jeffrey right into the hands of James Lane. Tommy Jeter's back up at right tackle. Sophomore from Dallas Spruce. Tony Jeffrey, by the way, no relation to former TCU running back Tony Jeffrey. Leading Arkansas rusher coming in, 427 yards for the year and a 4.4 average. as the ball was being delivered. Well, you either time it perfectly yeah. and make a great play or you're flagged and no flag. So it'll be third and we'll call it nine. Arkansas needing the Texas 36-yard line to keep this drive alive. They lead 7-0 early second quarter. On the draw, Jeffrey yard shot but now Arkansas with the win and they may think about a Todd Wright field goal here fans say go for it well, remember one of the musts we talked about was Arkansas keeping keeping them guessing that's the type of play that you do that keeps them guessing everybody was thinking pass that time you run that little quick sprint draw up the middle and the results are you get down inside the 40 yard line this would be about a 55 yard field goal and even with the win Jack Crow will get Rayther the punter on. Watch for a fake at this spot on the field, however. Not here. Instead, Chapman downs it at the seven-yard line. They'll take that. What a bounce on that ball. That ball actually bounced and came back. But there's a flag on the play right on the line of scrimmage. And if Arkansas will keep the drive alive. Wow, that is inexcusable. You line up offsides. 
coaches will just destroy you when you come to the sideline. Everybody who lines up on that ball has got to look in and make sure their head is behind the ball. On fourth down and one, you just do not give the offense the ball back. And that's just what Texas has done. We'll say it again. Neither offense potent enough to overcome very many mistakes, and that's four big mistakes by Texas. Penalties and the one turnover have been down seven at Arkansas looking for more. We'll have a timeout Arkansas. David McWilliams pacing the sideline has been a part of more Texas-Arkansas games than anyone. This is 24. Provided by Casey Jones, Crane Services of Little Rock and Pine Bluff, lifting Arkansas to new heights. They're at a new height so far in the first half. 11.36 to play in the second quarter. Up 7-0 after an offsides penalty on a punt against Texas. Their drive still going at the Horn 33-yard line. Jackson back in at tailback keeps on going for about eight. <laughs> Extremely dangerous, E.D. Jackson. Well, he made a nice cut on the play. He really was going to run off the right tackle and made just a little slide to the back side to pick up that yardage. But this is just power football. They're just saying, big man on big man, we think we, we can control you. And that's surprising because that's the one thing Jack Bro said they didn't think they could do. Dickerson went in motion, pitch to Jackson, big hole, first down, 18-yard line. Curl up for the tackle, and you're right, they're just clearing him out right yeah, now. They're just blowing him off the line right now, and that is really a surprise. This is an off-tackle play. Watch when, ja when Jackson gets the ball, and that makes a nice cut right there. That's Patchett who takes the outside to open up the hole, and then look at the, the look back to the back side, and there, the yard just picked up. Jackson gets a breather. Jeffrey in a tailback. to Price, 14 nothing, and we're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Seven yard punt, Kenny Heffield plays it, and this is a scrambling thing at first, and then the Arkansas blockers roll out the red carpet, Hatfield rides again, 81 touchdown yards. Maybe the fondest memory any Arkansas fan has, the national championship, the football writer's version at 64 over defending national champion Texas because of that Ken Hatfield return. They won 14 to 13. Texas scored late. Arkansas held off a two-point try. Kerwin Price has this year's addition to the Hogs up 14-0 with 10-34 to go in the second quarter. A little shocking the way Arkansas has blown Texas off the ball. I just never expected them to control the ball like they have running the ball. 
They're averaging seven and a half, almost seven and a half yards on first down. Texas less than two yards on first down. But the Texas mistakes have led to both scores. The offsides after they'd forced a punt. The fumble which led to the first touchdown. Ellison with the win behind him. This is Cadmus. Ivan Pickett turned Cadmus around after a 14-yard return. Texas needed some field position. They get none after the latest Arkansas scoring drive. Ten plays, 80 yards. First drive, one play, 30 yards. Texas from their own 17. In the blue jacket is Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton, an announced Democratic presidential candidate. Adrian Walker juking nicely out to the 22. Could have been stopped for no gain. He got about five or six. Tyrone Chapman made the tackle. You're looking at the seventh best defense in the country in yards allowed, fourth best in the country in points allowed this year. You wouldn't know it from what we've seen so far. Absolutely not. I'm in Texas's huddle. I'm saying right now, let's get a drive. Let's get something going. Let's take the pressure off our defense. This time out of the two-back set, and Adrian Walker will be a yard shy of the first. First time we've seen the eye for Texas. Are they going back to basics? Yeah, this is back to basics. This is exactly what you want to do in this situation. You're a little bit in of a shock. Right now you're down 14-0. You've got to get back. You've got to get some semblance of a drive. Arkansas is as good as everybody is saying they are after the disastrous last year this year they are playing strong football their defense is much much stronger than last year they're gonna measure this it it didn't look like Brown got the yard needed but they're gonna measure he was that close well he didn't get to fall forward but watch this right at the point of attack get low make a pile everybody gets up in there great fill in there and he just didn't get to fall forward that's what we thought, a foot shy, and McClanahan will punt. Well, he better be Peter the Great again today. Well, as you said, he reacts very well under pressure. He takes a lot of it upon himself, though. That's what everybody has said that has been his problem this year, is he's pressing so much, trying to score every play. Hogs should get great field position out of this kick into the wind. And anticipating that, they play for the return. Michael James perfectly defensed this time. And Norman Watkins and Will Burdine with the first horns down there. And Watkins may be shaken up. Minus four on a return of a 35-yard kick. Alabama and Tennessee awaiting Arkansas's entry into the SEC next year. Big Ten action underway. And Penn State trailing Rutgers. Arkansas from the 35. Freddie Bradley, the third tailback they've used today. Calvin, the fullback. And Allen on a roll will look deep. Caldwell wide open. Drops it. And a flag. Not sure what the flag could be here unless perhaps face masking. Well, I thought Garza played it extremely well when he came across. He waited until the ball got in there and looked like he swiped at the football. Let's see if we can see. He's going to roll out to his left, right of the screen. 
Now watch Garza, the number 17, come into the screen. He's beaten, but he's going to come behind. Oh, he evidently he called contact there. That was the perfect angle. There was contact. See the hand come in there and just swipe the football away. I thought that was perfect. That's interference. Defense. First down. And you see the official in the back of the screen making the call. He was in perfect position to see that contact. Willie Mac Garza, given his options, did the right thing because he was beat. He was gone. Caldwell would have had six. Fifth Texas penalty. Arkansas has been perfect. Play action. Allen under very little pressure today to the Texas 44. Powell and Padgett burying Jason Allen. He gained five yards. You know, for a freshman, he's making great decisions. He's back there. He's under a little bit of pressure. His pocket starts to collapse from the backside. Now he knows he's got to flush out, and he picks up plus yardage on a situation where a lot of quarterbacks just would have gotten flustered and gone down. Allen injured in fall workouts. Broke his hand in kind of a freak fumble drill. That's why he hasn't been in charge all year. What a difference he might have made early on. Tony Jeffrey. Close for the first down at the 40. Tackled by Garza and Curl. Well, I want to tell you, I watched Shane Drenette that time, and I mean he got leveled. He's going to, there's a, a wide receiver coming in motion right there, and Drenette never sees him coming down the line. He does block him high, which is a saving grace for Drenette, but he just crushed him. And it, it is an Arkansas first down. This is the best anyone has keeping people like Drenette and Pat under control this year. Oh, no one has stopped that front line. No one. Last year, what a difference. Five first downs the whole game, only 87 yards on the ground the entire game, and Texas a runaway winner in Austin. Arkansas looking to go up 21-0 here. Jeffrey weaving for five more. Anything they want on first down. Well, what they're doing is the offensive linemen, they're staying with their blocks. They're not just blocking and falling out. You'll see Patton in there. Now, what he does, he starts to come around. Now, it's a draw. He tries to get around. But you see how the center and the guard, that's Henry, just keep on driving on them? They're just staying with their blocks. And it just allows the running back just to kind of pick his way through. You see the little stutter step? Just kind of pick your way through and find the hole. Texas needing a sack. Allen has been elusive. Long target here. Caldwell first down. I want to tell you how hard that is to roll out and throw a strike like that. That's not something that you expect out of a freshman to throw across his body. It's a rollout. He's a right-handed quarterback, and he throws across his body. Just a perfect throw. Gracie Caldwell, the fastest Arkansas wide out, 4-4 in the 40. Two touchdown grabs this year, six in his career. From the 23, Jeffrey for maybe two, and that's about as well as Texas has defense any first down play. Texas gets him in some obvious passing situations, and they can tee off like they did in the fourth quarter against OU, but the game plan for Arkansas keeping Texas off balance has been executed to perfection so far. Absolutely. Passing on the downs when you're expecting a run, running on the downs when you're expecting a pass. That really frustrates a defense. Alvin and Jackson in the eye. Allen again all day, intended for Caldwell. And it'll be third and eight, but a flag down. Way on the other side of the field. That may be holding against Arkansas. First Arkansas penalty all day. I thought Bo Robinson and Jeter may have been held on that top side when they came around because they were just kind of locked up in there. The official evidently saw that, and that's really going to hurt Arkansas. That's the first critical penalty that's taken them out of uh, field position. So with 6-10 and a half, Texas now can have third and eight, or they can have second and 18. So if it's me, I go second and 18. I want to get them out of field Holding goal position. Offense, replay second down. 
first Arkansas penalty. Back now at the Horn 33. Wright's range this year has been up to 40. His career longest is 50. So they need to kick from right where they are now for him to equal his longest kick ever. Again, about a 15, 20 mile per hour breeze behind him if it comes to that. Allen finally chased and will get that one out of harm's way and it'll be third and 18. That was going to be a screen, weak side screen, and te Texas sniffed it out. Now we got another flag thrown. I mean, this is a real late one. If there's a record for latest flag, this is it. That was a good five they were seconds. They just about ready to huddle up. That's a good five seconds after the ball had fluttered harmlessly incomplete. Boy, and if you're Texas, you're hoping that this is not a holding. Ineligible receiver, yeah. Arkansas. That's the only two plays that are real, two penalties that it could have been. Either lineman downfield, ineligible, or else holding up Tony uh, Jeffrey as he was trying to get out to the flat. We'll see it to the top of our screen there. The call is a lineman downfield. And that's because Ineligible the play took... player downfield. Offense declined. Third down. And the reason for that penalty is the play took so long to develop. Those linemen are used to just sliding out there, counting 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. The pass is made and go down. Texas defense okay on third down. Their problems have been first and second. This is third and 20, 6.03 in the half. conservative play call and Kerwin Price the fullback to the 30 and they will go with Todd Wright on what would be a 47 yarder with the win. Well I'll tell you this Jack Crow must have a lot of confidence in Todd Wright. I would have thrown the ball that time. I would think that this is so far it's, it's right at the top of his range. I would want to pick up eight to ten yards to get a little bit safer field goal. He is an outstanding kicker in his career 83 percent most accurate in Arkansas history for his first two years and eight for ten this year. No good and he didn't quite have enough even with the win. Texas breathes a big sigh of relief, but they still trail by 14. The half, and though Texas has done nothing so far, that's time enough for them to close the half with the score. And if that happens, then they're almost like back to square one at half. Well, it certainly is, and I can tell you that. That's what they talked about on the sideline. They said, offense, get us some points on the board before halftime. Give us some momentum to get into that locker room and come back out the second half. All the pressure on the Texas defense this year that hasn't subsided one bit today. Texas, a miserable first quarter team and unbeatable after the first quarter this year. And that pattern holding true again. Justin McLemore, the redshirt freshman from Waxahachie. Eight or nine yards, high school quarterback and a three-time 110-meter hurdles champion and a seven-foot high jumper. Now, that type of athletic package at some point has got to come together. At least Texas fans hope so. Well, the one thing that Gardere doesn't want to do in this situation, Dave, is to start panicking, try to get it in too big a chunks. He's got a lot of time left with just under five minutes. A lot of time to drive down here and have safe plays. Adrian Walker. First down, Mick Thomas, the Arkansas tackling leader, who didn't start today. We expected to see some action, and he is in there for Ty Mason. Well, 22 years ago, he was here, and he's back. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's changed much. We'll look for him in the locker room, visiting the winner. Bill Brown in for Walker on first down. And Gardere play action all alone is Derek Duke into Arkansas territory at the 43. Well, I can tell you why Gardere continually goes to Duke. It's because he is wide open. Duke just comes out off the line, and he just seems to find a seam. You won't see any defenders in the picture. Look, none. He's just sliding out there. He turns up field. He's almost a little bit shocked. Hey, there's nobody even, uh, and no one around me. And Peter Gardere, finding Duke with regularity, is nine 
for 12. Make it 10 for 13 now at 113 yards in the first half. All day again, he'll keep and get popped by Phillips at the 40. And that's happened a few times, but he's popped up every time so far. And that's a good play by Gardner. When he dropped back, he got a flush around the, the top side of the, the uh, pocket. And instead of just standing back there looking and looking, everyone was covered. He picks up plus yards, picks up about four yards. That helps your offense. So many afternoons as the Texas whipping boy, but not today. He's been the best thing they've had going. Play action to Brown, chased by Ireland. And safely out of bounds with 317 in the half. Gardere will bring up third and six. Now, if I'm Gardere right now, I'm going to come back and I'm going to change my snap count because Arkansas is flying off the football. You saw how quickly he got flushed out of the pocket. That's because his defensive linemen are just taking off on the ball. Well, they gave him a spot at the 41. And instead of six needed, more like eight. Deep from McLemore and just off the fingertips. It looked catchable. Not a bad throw at all into the wind by Gardner, but nothing doing on a critical drive here late in the first half and this is all zone defense what you do is you drop back you have a zone area you just pick up that area the man that comes into it and you react to the ball so mcclanahan will try to pin michael james back inside his 10. this might not be a bad time for texas to fake but they won't They won't get a bounce either. Lance Scott down it at the 20. That's a net 13-yard kick and a gross 20-yard kick by Kelly McClanahan. Coming up at halftime, test your knowledge of the Southwest Conference with the Southwest Airlines Trivia Tester. We'll visit with former Arkansas All-America split end Chuck Dykus. And we meet this week's classroom champions. All this plus first half highlights coming up at halftime, which is three minutes and one second away. And that is plenty of time for Arkansas to tack on something to a 14-0 lead. Bryce runs into his quarterback, Allen. Allen doing well to keep for a yard or two, also doing well not to drop it. All right, 7-0 and counting for Florida State. What do you think? <laughs> Will Surprise. they hit 70 today? Surprise. <laughs> If I'm Texas, I'm surprised why Texas is not using a timeout in this situation. If you've got them inside the 20-yard line or right at the 20-yard line, utilize those. They only have two timeouts left, but utilize them quickly. Maybe get the ball back. Let something else happen. Like some, some big thing happen. Under two and a half minutes in counter. E.D. Jackson cut back. And Powers with Anthony Curl on his back for five yards. 2.15 and counting. Arkansas third down in no hurry. And Texas I'm in no mood to stop at that. the clock. Well, it seems like they're just content to get in the locker room. Only being down 14, but I, I would utilize those timeouts. And they might do it here. Nope, Arkansas timeout with a minute 57. And I'm with you at, at that spot on the field especially. Sure, you, you, can get a, you can get a bad snap from center on the punt. You can go over top of his head. You can come and block it. You can get a great return. All right, all you Texas uh, fans who have grown to hate this sound, soak it up one more time. Won't hear it after today. say again it, it, they have the reasons for going to the SEC they think LSU would be a big rival Mississippi Tennessee hard to imagine that they would ever 
ever enjoy beating anyone as much as they have enjoyed the 18 times they've beaten Texas. After the timeout, 157 and a half, third and five. Hogs need to get to the 31. Texas on a blitz that time. And Caldwell, not on the same page as Jason Allen, stops the clock. 153 remaining, and Texas will get it back, but with not nearly as much time as they might have had. Well, Arkansas really helped them that time because they called a timeout on the third down to stop the clock. So it works out great for Texas. They still have their two timeouts. And Rayther, who has boomed his first two, kicking to Kavnis at his 38. Line drive punt. Kavnis kept the balance, got away from Tyrone Chapman, and ends up losing to the 34, but a flag is down. You know, you talk about how close things are. If Kavnis could have got around that last person, he had a wall of white jerseys down his sideline. He was one person away from breaking it. Well, even if he'd broken it, it would have come back clipping Texas. Well, I think the clip was real, real late. It was just as he was tackled. Now, he starts that way, gets spun around. Now, when he comes back here, if he is able to get around the one block, and the clip is right there's the clip. That's what they called the clip. So if he's able to get around that play, he is down the sidelines. Doug Livingston was the Texas number 61 backup linebacker. Clipping. Redshirt freshman called for the clip. 140 to go in the half, and Texas starting from their 18. You know, talking with David McWilliams this week, he said, boy, my team was so drained from the Oklahoma game. He said, we couldn't even practice full speed until Wednesday or Thursday. Well, this time that they wake up. Yeah, they're emotionally drained, as you yeah. said. They're also just not there physically. Had not, they don't think will be right physically until this year is over with that nagging ankle. They expected him to be a 1,000-yard weapon this year, and he's gained 130 in his fifth game. Bill Brown off tackle, close to breaking that one even bigger. And as it is, he gets to the 35 on a 17-yard pickup. Clock stopped as they will move the chains with a minute 31 in the half. Dardier immediately got him up to the line. They have a hot call, yell, fire, fire, but he get on the line. He's making an audible on the line. See if they can get another big, another big play. We roll at 124 and count it. And Dardier will stop it. Out of bounds at the 41 with a minute 20. Chapman chased him out. And Dave, they still have their same, those, the same two timeouts. So it may come back to work in their benefit, keeping those timeouts rather than using them. Well, they know, and Arkansas people know, that the history of this series is that Arkansas finds a way to lose to Texas. A lot of years they play this game and look back and say, we were too up for it. Arkansas very loose today. The 30. When Ireland came up on the line of scrimmage, I thought there's nobody to block him there. They're playing this one back offense. Watch him on the bottom of your screen. See, he comes right up there. Nobody to block him. There's no back back there. When Gardair turns around, Ireland is right in his face. And the clock rolling at 53 seconds and counting, and Texas huddling. And apparently saying, we'll settle for nothing worse than 14-0. 36 seconds. Gardere says, go long, Neal, and knocked away, but interference on Curtis Banks with 29 seconds in the hand. Gardere was looking at Neal, and he didn't see McLemore cut deep, and nobody followed him in a red jersey. Well, now you turn around. This penalty will get you almost to midfield. Get you about the 45-yard line. 
Gardera under no pressure. You're right. He looked. He just picked out one receiver he was going with. There was the contact. That's a good call. Goes for the man in double coverage. You just saw McLemore. That's an interference. Defense. 15 and an automatic first down. Just saw McLemore breezing by his lonesome up the sideline of Gardere not looking that way. From their 47, 29 seconds. Derek Duke had better get out of bounds. He doesn't. 21 seconds and Texas timeout. Their next to last timeout as they have reached the Arkansas 40. Now with the wind as strong as it is, they need a lot more than this. 20, 25 more yards. I'm surprised he didn't get out of bounds. He had the sideline. It looked as if he looked at it for a second and then just decided to turn it up and take on the cornerback. He should have just skipped out of bounds. He would have saved probably four or five seconds. If, if there's evidence of an OU hangover, it's mentally. Don't you think? They're just not mentally sharp. All the penalties, decisions like that hurting him. Well, with a win like we have, he's got to get to about inside the 30-yard line to get a shot at this field goal. So they need to pick up about 10 yards, and they got 21 seconds to do it. That should give them at least three plays to pick up that 10 yards. You know what, though? This wind is swirling. It's not left to right across your screen as it was when this game started. It's kind of a cross breeze now from the far sideline to the near sideline. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom Network. 53,000-plus War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. Dave Farnett and Dave Rowe as we head to the end of the first half. And Texas from the Arkansas 40 with 21 seconds. Gardere going deep. Picked off by Banks. And Curtis Banks finally out of bounds at the 34 with nine seconds in the half. Dave, on a pass like that, Banks is just a deep zone. He's just playing like a center fielder, reading the quarterback. As soon as Gardere unleashes it right there, Banks is already breaking. See him in the top of your screen, already breaking to the corner to help out. Adrian Walker, the intended receiver, nowhere near Adrian Walker. That's just a surprise for me because I thought he could have picked up 10 to 15 yards with two or three plays using those timeouts. Instead, they elected to go long. Third interception this year for Banks. Flag down as Allen took a knee with six seconds. Someday, Lloyd Dale will give us the call. Procedure Arkansas will snap it one more time with six seconds. A big reason for this Arkansas turnaround this year, turnovers. First four games, they were minus three. Last two games, plus six. Plus one today. Gardere has fumbled and thrown the interception. this finally the end of the first half and the hog fans celebrate in full cry their 14 to nothing lead over david mcwilliams longhorn a chance for the hogs to go out in style one last shot at texas and they lead by surprising. Jason Allen 6 of 15 with an interception. Peter Gardier 11 of 16 125 yards with an interception and it's 14-0 Arkansas back for the third quarter after this. Jason Allen in Arkansas 30 minutes away from their first win in Arkansas over Texas in 10 years. The 81 Texas team was top ranked came in got blown out 42 to 11. Six of the last seven meetings 
been decided by a touchdown or less. And Texas trailing 14 to nothing as we review their team musts and the grades from Professor Rowe not on a curve today. No, they're certainly not. They, OU has had a tremendous effect on them emotionally and physically. They, the offense has not taken any pressure off the defense. And mobilized Patton's brigade, his brigade has played strong, but they haven't dominated like they did so much in the Oklahoma game. On the other hand, Jack Crow at Arkansas rate straight A. Well, don't lose in the first quarter. Wow, they certainly did not do that. They've kept the defense guessing all day, all day long. They've been able to capitalize. And the kicking advantage, Arkansas is averaging 16 yards a punt more yardage, I should say, than is Texas. Texas trailing by 14 will again have to call on the defense. Ted Barnhill will kick. Ron Dickerson waiting at the goal line. Will take a knee and it'll be Arkansas from the 20. In the first half, the Arkansas drive chart looked this way. Scored on one play and on 10 plays. And look at the, look where they scored from the 30 yard line in that was that fumble by Gardere and then they had that one nice drive. Price and Jackson in the eye behind Allen on first and 10 and it's E.D. Jackson and he's got a big hole off the left side for four or five yards before Grady Kavnis wraps him up. And you would have to think that Arkansas went to school on that OU film from last week and notice what happened when Oklahoma tried to sit on a 7-0 lead. Now this is a 14-0 lead. You wouldn't expect them to sit on it at this early point in the second half, would you? No, I wouldn't. I think they're going to play very safe, but I think they're still going to attack Texas's defense. Jackson again. And that's why they can continue to play safe. They have dominated the line of scrimmage. Chuck Dykus and Bill Montgomery remark at halftime, they have not seen Arkansas blow anybody off the ball this way. They haven't seen it done to Texas like it's happened today. Well, in all my preparations, this was the one area I did not think that Arkansas even remotely had a chance, and that was to control Texas's great front seven. Jackson again. This time, Tommy Jeter met him head on. And we have not called the names of Robinson, Jeter, Patton, and Dronette very often. Linebackers in secondary have been overworked in the tackle department for Texas. Well, we talked earlier that Chris Oliver had a big task today, and that was to work against Shane Dronette. He did a good job that time. Dronette kind of held his ground, but Oliver stayed with him. That's the thing, Dave, has been so impressive to me is that Arkansas is not losing their blocks. Their offensive linemen are staying with Texas. Tony Jeffrey in to replace E.D. Jackson on second and seven. Allen play fake. Saw an opening, and it closed quickly as Michael Padgett read the scramble by Allen. Stops him at the 35 and bring up third and nine. He lost two. The one thing Arkansas didn't do very well in the first half is this, convert third downs. And this is a big one. You hate to say that all the time, but it seems like every third down when you're, on, you're in your own territory is a big one. On the blitz, he got away from Powell, but not Jeter. And the Hogs will have to punt. Boy, Powell came a long way around there to get that. It wasn't a blitz up the middle. It was more of a blitz on the outside, on the backside of Jason Allen. You'll see Powell there, 56, come all the way around. Allen had thoughts of bringing the ball down and starting to scramble in there. Pete Rather averaged 47 yards on his three first half kicks. Off the side of the foot, but an Arkansas bounce. All the way to the 18 of Texas. Not that impressive off the toe, but he keeps his 47-yard average. 
the Texas drive chart in the first half a picture of frustration. Well, field position has been a big factor with them. You see that they really have not had the ball any time in plus territory past the midfield stripe. Gardere, decent numbers, 11 of 16 for 125. But the two critical turnovers. Butch had not opens the second half at tailback, and he rambles up to the 27. Good seven or eight yards on first down before the tackle by Tyrone Chapman. And now, if you're David McWilliams, what you try to do is you're trying to put building blocks together. You've told your defense in the locker room, you get out and you stop them. You worry about stopping them. You tell your offense, you get out there, everybody do their assignments. Don't everybody start worrying about everybody else, and we'll win this football game. That's what that was what the conversation was at halftime. Justin McLemore in motion. They call on had not again, and Darwin Ireland brings him down at the 32, but he's got a first down. And those are about the most authoritative runs by Butch had not in a while. One reason he's hurt, he's been hurting since the Auburn game, hurt an ankle in the first half, and the Texas coaches doubt whether he'll be 100% all year long. Jason Burleson with a quad pull, Saxton with the shoulder. A lot of banged up orange and white coming into this one. Had not a third straight time. They were ready. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. You're watching Florida's Best, Sunshine Network, an affiliate of Prime Network. War Memorial Stadium sold out and roaring. Their hogs lead Texas in their final battle in the Southwest Conference. Gardier under pressure and dropped again. Henry Ford from defensive end. And what Gardair saw was Ireland sneak up on the line again. Ireland is the outside linebacker, and you see Gardair kind of peek over at him. Now all of a sudden he sees him. Now he's got to bring the ball down, and the pocket just collapses around him. Arkansas with a tendency to telegraph their blitzes. That didn't help Texas that time, and it's third and 18. Justin McLemore at midfield. And the Waxahachie freshman has a first down. That must have been a broken pattern because you never have two receivers right in the same area. There again, watch the foot get down. It's right on the sideline. When he jumps, he's got to get that one foot down. Does a good job of doing that. But you see the two wideouts in the same area? Had to be a broken pattern. Kenny Neal was the other Texas receiver in the neighborhood. First down, 49-yard line, and Roderick Walker is the latest Texas setback, and he heads up field. He might be gone, but he stepped out of bounds. Curtis Banks had an angle on Roderick Walker, but a redshirt freshman from Irving Nimitz finally healthy after a hyperextended knee goes to work. And this is the, really the first time they've been able to run weak side on that. Walker just steps out of bounds here. He should have been a little bit more aware of where the sideline was because he was clear. Why not try him again? And riding right up the back of his blocker, Shea Shafee that time, Ray Lee Johnson on the tackle. Roderick Walker, before his senior year at Irving Nimitz, a surefire blue chipper. He broke his ankle the first play of his senior season and was finally operated on November of last year. They think they finally have that ankle cleared up, and they expect him to really be a great one at Texas. He joins their legion of running back potential. In and out of Duke's hands, he would have been very close for a first down. And the attendance at 55-618. This game didn't sell out until late, and they came within a couple hundred of the all-time stadium record, also against Texas. 
Boy, really an important down here for Texas. Keep this drive alive. They have to pick up about seven yards. Watch Gardner go to that little safe pass. Think he may go to Derek Duke? Well, this is their biggest play today. No question. And he's blitzed by Chapman. Cannot get away. Henry Ford with another sack. Dave, more importantly, they lost field position again. They were at the 30-yard line, and now they're going to be out at the 38-yard line, 39-yard line, takes everything away from a possible field goal. Each time Texas has had a chance to score, the Arkansas defense has stiffened. And on fourth and 14, McClanahan. and it'll be a 39-yard kick with a net 19 for Kelly McClanahan. Team 65. Texas was number one. Arkansas was number three. Arkansas led 20 to nothing. Texas came back, led 24 to 20, but John Brittenham with a one-yard dive capped an 80-yard drive for the win, and Texas fell to a six and four all the way from the top spot in the nation. And until 69, they thought that might have been the best game of the century. Four years later, they thought differently. Price and Jeffrey behind Jason Allen, 8.27 in the third. Allen on the option keeper, wrapped up by Curl and Padgett. But every time, it seems Arkansas getting good first down yard. Indiana, Michigan, a little closer than most people expected. And this one. Allen got six, second and four, two tight ends, Lindsey and Botkin. Caldwell, the lone wide out, bottom of your screen. Erwin Price off tackle, it'll be third and two. Speaking of games that they're a little closer than you expected. That one is a surprise too. Marshall over NC State. Speaking of Marshall, Jason Allen coming out of high school in Edmond, Oklahoma, had two scholarship offers. Arkansas and Marshall in Division 1-2A. You mentioned Cale Gundy in his presence. Ooh, <laughs> that strikes a nerve. That strikes a nerve. Gundy was a highly touted quarterback in Oklahoma. As Jeffries turned away, and it'll be a punting situation. Allen was in Gundy's shadow, but you'd have to say, based on Gundy's experience against Texas and Allen's experience so far today, he's the better quarterback. I can tell you this. This Texas defense is starting to gear it up. I just get the feeling watching them quickly get to the ball, their pursuit lines and angles, and the way their front line is coming off the ball. They are gearing up their play. Van Malone, normally a good punt blocker for Texas, injured and not with the team. Have the slips at the 41. 37-yard kick and a return of five. 6.35 to go in the third. We're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, Arkansas is messing with Texas today. few times today and guard there on play action screen nice catch Phil Brown eight or nine yards on first down Texas has tried the eye they have for the most part gone one back three wideouts and they have outgained Arkansas they have not been able to overcome their own mistakes their field position today has been terrible. They've started at inside the 30. The average drive started on the 29-yard line. They just have not had good field position all day. They haven't gotten that big break in Arkansas's territory. Second and two carry. This will be first down yardage for Phil Brown. 
came in as the second leading rusher for the horns at 149 yards and had lost his confidence he had a great start to his freshman year big games against Penn State and Colorado then had not supplanted him and he got it back by picking up a career high 119 against Rice Played pretty well against Oklahoma started today Gardere has Duke in the flat and he is inside the hog 40 and gang tackled by four or five hogs led by Ireland and Orlando Waters Texas chipping away. Yeah, they've, they're starting to gear it up a little bit, too. You could tell the defense, the last couple series, that Texas's defense has been in there. They play with a lot more intensity, and you start to get the same feeling about the offense. They look as if they've got a little bit more confidence. They should have come away with at least a field goal try on that last series, but again, they have that same confidence. Fumble picked up by Brown. And Phil Brown knocked out of bounds on a broken play. He's inside the Arkansas 30. Well, try that's, that more often. That's the difference between winning a ball game and keeping a drive alive and losing it. Some backs would just fumble on this ball, just, just try to cover it. Now, Neil out here, he just occupies his man on the corner. You saw him flash through, and that's what gave him that big break on the corner. That was a saving hit by Kirk Collins to knock him out that time. First and 10 at the 29. 4:53, third quarter, 14 to nothing, Razorbacks. Draw play to Brown. Got away from Chapman. Banks at the 23 on the tackle, and again, first down proves positive for Texas. Well, this is a misdirection play. It's going to start strong side, come back weak side. You'll see right there, the action looks like a strong side. Now you bring the two big tackles around. Brown makes a great read right there to skip outside. There was no hole there. This is how we saw him at Penn State last year. First game is a collision, and he almost had 100 yards. He lost it, but he's gotten it back not replaces him here up the middle he'll be close for a first down and that looks like the had not of old and doesn't this look like basic football we're not to, we're not taking any chances if we're Texas right now to lose this drive I'm sure their coaching staff is saying right now keep to the basics drive that football in there offensive line dig a little bit deeper it's time to in the old saying suck it up and get something <laughs> You know, last night, Lynn Amity was saying, we're changing everything from Oklahoma. Are they going back to that old system? It does look that way. Two tight ends, Curtis Thrift and David Bearden on third and a short one. Had not. First down. And that ankle doesn't hurt at all right now. No, not on a cut like that. He's on AstroTurf, and that puts a lot more stress on your ankles. And it's going to be off the right guard. And watch the move he makes backside, jumps over top, gets his feet back down, and picks up that first down. That's a great look back into the backside hole. Where were holes like that in the first half? We didn't see it. Best drive of the day so far for Texas. Round back in, inside the 10, up the sideline, touchdown. In 1969, the night before the game, Daryl Royal decided in this situation he would go for two on the first touchdown and not on the second touchdown if he trailed 14 to nothing. They made it and they won 15-14. David McWilliams will go for one. That surprise you? A little bit. But I think that right now you don't want to have a letdown. You want to score, get that extra point. You're only seven down, then you go for the big win. And Ziegler is good. <laughs> Great tightrope job by Phil Brown. Boy, it really was. He just exploded through the hole. And a couple of his wide receivers, see Duke in there and Neal, they both got great blocks downfield. That's what really sprung them. You'll see those, those wide outs getting blocks. That's important. See Neal there, six. He and 48 have got Duke, have got them kind of stacked up in there. Not crushing blocks, but kind of getting the way blocks. 
different slant on things for Texas. 3.52 in the third, and they're back in the game. David McWilliams hopes it repeats itself. In the fourth quarter of this game last year in Austin, Texas scored 29 and one going away, 49 to 17. That Texas team, a little more firepower than this Texas team. Barnhill's kick to Freddie Bradley. And the special teams come alive for Texas. Brian Howard, first man to greet Bradley after the eight-play, 59-yard scoring drive. Now, the history of this series also has plenty of years where Arkansas got out in front, Texas came back, and the entire Arkansas contingent, everybody wearing red and white, would kind of sag because they are so used to Texas finding a way to win. We'll look for signs of that happening now. Reached the 14. Earl and Padgett drove him back to the 11. Don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. We have three and a half minutes in the third quarter. And the Texas defense, if they can hold on here, get them three and out, will have done their part. Well, some people would think that Arkansas is getting very conservative, but I just think that it's Texas's defense that's playing a little bit more tenacious. This stuff worked in the first half. Flag down, Jeffrey down. And now Shane Dranette will draw a flag for kicking oh the Arkansas blocker, Isaac Davis. Oh very boy. blatant for all the world to see by Dranette. Well, there was an earlier flag, I think, for motion. Or illegal, or illegal procedure, but Drenette's penalty was just as blatant as you could see. That's just frustration. Well, this is no time to get frustrated. You got to rein it in, and, and Drenette, as, as a junior, should know that. So you stop. You've got basically you've got him stopped inside the 15-yard line. That's the one thing you don't want to do is create create a first down. There's the illegal motion. Now here's going to be the personal foul. Now maybe we can see Drenette. He's 81. Right there in your upper left. He just, boy, the official right there to, to spot it. And he's out of there and he's replaced by Lance Wilson. Well, it's such a critical time to do something like that. Dead ball, is... ball star, offense. So they marked that one back and now I'll see if they put the, the personal foul back on him. Dead ball. Personal foul, defense, automatic first down. When he's such a great player. Drenette is, they're talking about Drenette possibly if he, if he was to skip his senior year being a top five draft choice this year. But that won't impress any scouts. As great as he is physically, you just can't lose your cool in a game like this. And he did, and Arkansas gets a break first and 10 after the seventh Texas penalty. Allen still with it. Great option fake, and he'll keep for 10 more. Well, that was a fake. He just flat out froze the corner on that little option when he came down the line. Good fake into the line, and then when he brought the ball out, he just froze the cornerback. Here, now he's outside. Now watch the little fake out here, right with the hand, boom. Freeze the cornerback, he has to commit, and it just leaves it wide open inside. In the SEC, Alabama, a home win over number eight, Tennessee. Allen Chase, and still manages positive yardage. Patton had a shot at him, Wilson had a shot. But he is tough to wrap up. 6'1", 192-pound redshirt freshman. Well, you might think as a freshman starter, Jack Crow would make some concessions to that and not try to put too much on him. He says, no, I give him everything I gave Quinn Groby last year. Will 
Wilson. Pressuring as the ball completed to Tony Jeffrey, and Allen paid a price for that one. But in a couple of plays since Wilson replaced Shane Drenette, he has made an impact. Wilson does a good job on this play. He's 69. Watch this. Just bursts right up there and gets pressure. Makes that screen pass be thrown quickly. That's what really fouled up the play. Wilson, a senior. Drenette, a junior. Pretty good tag team at left defensive end. Third and ten. E.D. Jackson in a tailback. And Patton got Allen right as he released that ball, intended for Kurt Botkin, the tight end, and the defense survives the mistake by Drenette, and they force an Arkansas punt. When we've talked about how strong this defense is in the last three quarters, they've only had 13 points scored against them in the last three quarters. Outstanding day in the win for Pete Rather. Good job keeping the ball away from Cadmus. Here comes the horn rush. And Rather was contacted, but they say not enough for a flag, and you'll really hear the boo about 75 percent acting 25 yeah. percent contact i was just going to say if you get hit that hard on the foot and it completely spins you around and throws you down he is going to be contacted on the foot but watch the way he spins around wham i mean just completely loses his balance and the official the official reads it as a little bit more acting than what he probably should have that was joey ellis a true freshman from tyler Fans on their feet. Guard there. Deep on play action for Kenny Neal and 2D. He had beaten the double coverage of Collins and James. It'll be second and ten. We are pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. We have 108 in the third, 14 to 7 Arkansas. And next week, we are back to Waco, where we saw the upset of the last 30 years for Rice Owl football. They beat Baylor. Baylor against AM later today. And next week, they host the TCU Horn Crawl. No pressure. Duke. That's only four or five, and he's wrapped up by James. So another critical third down for Texas. Well, Arkansas just came up with a different defense. What they did is the ball was snapped. The two interior linemen just kind of gave off the ball. That was really an odd defense. Watch the two interior linemen. They're just going to kind of drop back. See that? Look, they just drop back, and they're playing in an up position. Guarding against the deep ball that time. Third and four. And Gardner wants time. That is the first Texas timeout. You know, I, I made a comment about Drenette possibly being as high as a fifth round draft choice. I want to tell you, I in no way think that college players should skip a senior year. But uh, he is that type of a football player. And if he is out of this football game, if, they, if he's been thrown out, where he was not ejected, evidently David McWilliams is just disciplining him for that action. He is a huge loss to this uh, defensive team. Although his replacement, Lance Wilson, didn't miss a beat in that series after Dronette was taken out. Got to figure he will be back, though. Well, around the Southwest Conference, the SMU Mustangs with Mike Romo and Marcus Melanson both undergoing knee surgery yesterday, and Romo's career in all likelihood is over as the SMU quarterback. Baylor looking for their first win over the Aggies since 85. Sold out Floyd Casey Stadium awaiting AM today. And David Klingler with an inner ear infection experiencing some balance problems and is listed as doubtful today against. The Mustang. In and out of the hands of Derek Duke. And Texas. 
Texas will have to kick. Good pass. Should have been caught. Should have been first down horns. Well, you go to the well a lot of times, but I don't think that anyone thought that Derek Duke would miss this pass. It hit him right smack in the hands. He just never kind of got the handle on it and drops it. He was wide open for that first down. You can see Gardera there shaking his head saying, hey, I threw it right in there. Now McClanahan needs and gets a big kick. James at the five. Nowhere. 48-yard boot that time. The TCU Horn Frogs and Rice haven't faced each other with winning records since 1957. That's the case today. And speaking of the Owls, they haven't been 4-2 since 1963, their last winning season. They finally decided that that, that win over Baylor, probably their biggest since they beat Texas when they were in the top 10 in 65. They beat them. That was the week after Texas lost that classic to Arkansas. And A&M, unlike these two teams, great in the first half this year. A&M and Baylor, the top 20 representatives of the conference, just about ready to kick off in Waco. Arkansas in a hole. Jeffrey straight up the middle. They are getting quite conservative now. Yes, no it, question. It really does look as if they're getting quite conservative. And if I'm Texas, I'm going to want to have my defense out in this situation. If they can hold them here, they'll get their best field position of the game. That's the end of the third quarter. 15 more minutes for Texas and Arkansas. Hi, I'm Susie of Video Magazine. Would you like to get a free trial issue of video? There's a whole new world of exciting video products on the market. Camcorders, VCRs, and TVs. But which one is best for you? Month after month, Video Magazine lets you in on the hottest camcorders and coolest VCRs. The latest and the greatest. Where the buys are and which movies are worth watching. Secrets of professional shooting and how to get the most out of your dollars. Act now and get our annual camcorder issue, special awards issue, and full preview issue. All devoted to state-of-the-art new products. You can try Video Magazine risk-free by calling the number on your screen now. You'll receive the magazine on a free trial basis. If you decide to subscribe, it's just $9.97 for 11 more issues. That's 66% off the newsstand price. Call 1-800-845-6043 to get your free trial issue. That's 1-800-845-6043. November's the month to remember on Prime Network. College football, we've got it on Prime with live coverage from the Southwest Conference, Pac-10, and SEC. Plus same-day action from the Big A. Fight fans, mark your calendars. Boxing's best bouts from around the country are here. And all month long, keep up with your favorite pro teams on Around the NFL and NBA action. It's a November sports feast on Prime Network. Texas defense scored at right about this general area of the field to beat Oklahoma. Boy, would they like history repeat itself as the fourth quarter gets underway, and it is Kerwin Price smashing his way to the 15. It'll be third down and two for Arkansas. Texas defense solidifying things in the third quarter. The offense finally completed a drive. They got a 14-yard scoring run by Phil Brown to cut the lead in half. And it is a different Arkansas offense in this second half than what we saw in the first half. The Keith Wright haven't seen much of Ron Dickerson this half. We have no injury information. Gracie Caldwell left. Allen on the pitch, Jeffrey. Mark Berry knocks him out at the 32 after a pickup of 17. 
Boy, how he brought this ball out of the out of the fullback and pitched it. Watch there, he's actually going down right there and flips it out. There's almost a clip on Burry there. That looks like a push from the back. Could have been, didn't call it first and ten, Arkansas. Allen on play action. Ran out of time and coughs it up. Now they blow the whistle and they say no fumble. He was hit by Bo Robinson from right defensive end. So Robinson made Our third quarter statistical picture. How conservative did Arkansas get the third quarter? They didn't throw for a single yard. 84, the same total they had at halftime. And Texas now with a pretty sizable total yardage edge. Three more first downs, and the difference continues to be the mistakes. Which Arkansas cashed in for both their touchdowns in the first half. Second and 12, draw play for maybe three. Jeffrey hit hard by James Patton, bring up third and long. Got to be impressed by Jason Allen and his oh decision making. Well, that was the one thing that I thought was interesting that Jack Crow said about him. He said uh, he has as much savvy making his checks as any quarterback I've ever had. Checks are when you come to the line, you have to call out what the defense is, make your audibles. And as a freshman, that's just something that you gain with experience. You just don't expect it. Flag down, whistles, and Keith makes the catch. And if the play stands, which I don't think it will, it'll have a first down, but they were blowing whistles prior to the pass by Allen. Well, they're going to call two men in motion, but I thought that he reset. One of the wideouts looked like he, he started to go in motion, and then it looked as if he reset. And if he's reset for a second, then the other man went in motion. That's what the call Illegal shift. Two men in motion on the offense. Repeat, third down. TCU and Rice underway. And how about Kansas State, 17-14 over Nebraska in the third. Didn't expect that one either. Come on, Arkansas, come on now. Warren's ready to blitz, and they jump off sides. Michael Paget tried to time his blitz, and that time, unlike in the first half, they did snap the ball or else contact was made. But you know, I saw Botkin fall off the line, too. They're calling it against Texas, but I Still thought Botkin back. set back. Paget had company Jeter also jump prior to the snap, so instead of third and 16, third and 11. saw how stout the Texas defense has been on third down. They've allowed only two of 11 conversions. All day for Allen and almost intercepted by Lance Gunn intended for Tracy Caldwell. The Horn defense holds again. Boy, Garza was on him just like a blanket coming out of the backfield and off the line. Garza just in that man-on-man -man coverage. He's number 17, guards. Look at this. He has to play man on man. Just cuts the outside, makes his adjustment. He's right there. You see Gunn in there. Gunn had really a shot to come down with that football. Crow admits Allen's better than I expected him to be, and I thought he'd be good. Rafer has been great today. Over the shoulder at the 14 for Cadmus. Out of bounds at the 27, a 55-yard boomer by Pete Rather. We return after this from Southwest Airlines. Frank was either dancing or else he's trying to stay warm up there. Well, the wind, this, this is the weirdest wind I've ever seen. When the game began, it was straight down the field left to right. Now... Where Texas is, it's in their face. If they get down to the other end, they'll have it behind them. And at midfield, it's straight across the field. Strange swirling breeze. Roderick Walker takes the pitch from Gardere. 
Darwin Ireland brings him down after a gain of eight. Nick Thomas was over to help, and it'll be second and short with 11.46 and counting in the ballgame. Rees was clocked at kickoff at 15 to 20 miles an hour, and it's probably at least that strong, but it's going in three different directions. <laughs> There's the other flags <laughs> at the other end. It's on the same side. Walker, I don't think, has the first. Thomas, the conference tackling leader last year and among the top four this year. Yeah, they may have to measure here. That's exactly what they will do. McWilliams, compared to the first half, like Jack Crow, has gone conservative. But unlike Crow, his team has taken to that. Whereas Arkansas has not been nearly the offensive machine they were. First down, Texas. Well, there's nothing that disrupts coaches more than not having players practice. Because you go out there and all of a sudden you're saying, okay, who do we have at running back? Well, he's got a bad ankle. He's got a bad quad. He's got a bad shoulder. Well, we've got to have so-and-so. Then all of a sudden, halfway through the week, one or two of them get well, and then you're trying to practice with them. It is really frustrating for a coach trying to put up an offensive game plan with that situation. Brian Howard, Duke, and Neal are all wide left. And Gardere to the tight end, Curtis Thrift. Tripped up, still gained eight. Thrift, the senior from Lampasas. Without Jason Burleson behind him today, we didn't expect to see Burleson with a quad full. Then 38 and counting. Bill Brown alone set back. And he'll cut it up into Arkansas territory. He might be gone. Kurt Collins has a chance. No, sir. Touchdown, Bill Brown. 55 yards. about making the most of a few chances. Nine carries, two touchdowns for Brown and 115 yards. Jason Ziegler can tie the game. across the grain down the seam and he is off to the races well do we have another classic one point texas arkansas game maybe but a lot of time left nothing new for these two and the most famous one point game of all of course was the big shootout of 69 number one texas surviving against number two arkansas and legend has it even after 22 years frank broyles has yet to look at a tape of the game He and Daryl Royal got this rivalry started. It comes to a close today in 10 minutes and 18 seconds. Ted Barnhill will pin Dickerson. One yard deep, he thought about a touchback, and he wishes he had settled for that. It was Bradley rather than Dickerson. Freddie Bradley making a mistake in judgment. That's a big mistake. You're going to get the ball automatically out to the 20-yard line. He elects to run it down. There's what they call the hit hunter. Jeff Higgins. Throughout his career, 
has been a standout special team Longhorn. That's why he knows for the ball. And what a swing in emotions. This stadium goes dead silent on the Brown touchdown. They erupt on the missed extra point. And a little bit quiet again as E.D. Jackson. Oh, is he belted by Patton? Head to head contact by the general. Nebraska has pulled even. And Rice with the early lead on TCU. We asked Leon Fuller yesterday, the Texas defensive coordinator. And he sees any similarities between this Texas defense and the great ones of 83 and 79. He said, I do in one area. This defense doesn't care what hole they're put in by the offense. They think they can stop anyone, anytime. And Price is stopped here at the 15. And you hear the crowd booing because they realize, too, that Arkansas has got extremely conservative in this second half. It's almost like you're trying to protect that lead and don't lose it. And I know you want to protect it, but you still have got to challenge the defense. Allen for timeout. Each team will have two. This one with 9.13 to play. Arkansas will discuss third and seven when we come back. Average beginning their drives on their own 12-yard line. They began this one on their own 11. This is third and seven. And they keep it on the ground, and I don't think pick up the first down with E.D. Jackson, wrapped up by Lance Gunn. Of course, the measurements may be required. The mark is everything, and they will call an official timeout for the change. Look at that, Middle Tennessee within 10 at the half. Someone told me that Florida State was a 50-point favorite in that game. Well, another good reason not to bet. You know, the thing that impresses me, too, about this Texas defense is, boy, when they lock up on them, they do not allow those running backs to fall forward and get that extra yard or so on the way down. They just rip them back. Inches shy. Now, when you hear the fans all say, go for it. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> did I well, not? Did it? Now, we, they may want to try to draw them off sides. We have yet to see Rayther on the field. We have seen Arkansas successfully draw Texas offsides in this game, and they may try it again. But I can't imagine them snapping the ball any other way. What do you know? That is amazing. That is just amazing. I want to tell you, I would never have believed that they were going to snap that ball. And a quarterback sneak. First down, Arkansas. Jack Crow says, yeah, you think I'm conservative. I think he may have heard us. Wow. seen <laughs> with this much time left going for it that close to your own goal line fourth down on your own 19 yard line well back to the up the middle surge by Kerwin Price and back he goes I tell you what Lance Wilson has played on fire and we haven't seen Shane Drenette since that kicking pen and again we have no information that Drenette was ejected but he hasn't returned tell you how huge a play that is what Jack Crow is trying to do is get that emotion keep that emotion with his offense and try to tell them in a way say hey listen I've got a lot of confidence in you and it worked second and nine E.D. Jackson could not get away from Anthony Curl another big day for the junior linebacker from Aldine MacArthur and another third and long for Arkansas. Boy, that was a great play by Curl. He takes the up back and just smashes the up back, sheds him away and makes the tackle and keeps containment. That's why he had 14 tackles last week. He is quite a football player. Texas tackling leader with 48 coming in. So on third and six, Botkin checks out. 
Lindsay is the tight end. We still don't see Ron Dickerson at whiteout. We haven't seen him this entire half. Caldwell in motion. Intended too tall for Caldwell, belted by Kavnis, and I don't think they will go for it on fourth and six. No, if they do, I'm going to be <laughs> really shocked. Now you punt it away, obviously. If you're Texas, do you go for the block and risk a roughing? Well, I think they're going. For, I would go for the rush. I would go for the rush. I would try to put pressure on the punter. He's had such an exceptional day. I know I'm going to get good field position. I should get the ball near midfield. They go for the return. Another boomer by Rather. Cabnus from his 24. Brady Cabnus all the way to the 48 on a 23-yard return. Daryl Royal, 15 and 5 in his career against Arkansas, was his team lucky to win the game of the century in '69. Uh, we were lucky to win in, uh, in uh, Fayetteville in 69. They had no chance of defeating us the next year we played in Austin. So we had some, you know, sometimes we were lucky and guessed the right game plan, and, and uh, I felt like uh, we did a good job of coaching, or other things where I felt like we, you know, we weren't all that well prepared and didn't do a good job in our game preparation. 69 Arkansas game was one goal. Well, he could use a little luck here. Bill Brown carried for no gain. It'll be second and ten. A&M with a Terry Venatulius field goal leading Baylor. Well, let me set a scene for you. If you drive the length of the field, if you're if you're Texas, and you have to come up and kick that field goal, boy, what what goes through David McWilliams' mind? when he lines up for that field goal that might perhaps put them in a, a head. That's Henry Ford making his way to the Arkansas bench. Clock roll 6.38 to play. And too tall for Duke. He was open. He had first down yardage. It'll be third and ten. You can just see Gardere when he rolled out there. He was trying to the decision whether to run or pass. He could have picked up seven or eight yards with the run, elected to pass, and again, it just sailed on him, just went too high. That's the one where you have to follow all the way through and drill with throw that strike to him. Fifth largest crowd in Arkansas history in full first down he finds his tight end in tight coverage and that may be Gardere's best pass of the day he started to flush he was under a lot of pressure and watch he gets the happy feet but all of a sudden he picks up thrift and Singh just throws it with that arm and just delivers it right in there thrift with his biggest catch of the day a little bit behind him but if he let him just perfectly it might have hit that other receiver in the area Roderick Walker is the setback. Gardere audibleizing on first and ten. And again, Duke unable to hang on. When he's their most sure-handed receiver. And he's dropped two or three like that. Is he having trouble setting his feet? It's like the, the hands and the feet aren't on the same page well, on both these drops. Yeah, that ball was a little bit behind him, but that's a very catchable ball. When it hits you flat in the hands, you've got to come down with it. And if he catches that, he's one-on-one, -on -one and he might go. That is a huge break for Arkansas. Bill Brown is the setback. Gardere, that time, had McLemore open and overthrew him, but we'll get a flat. Orlando Waters for the late hit. Oh boy. Coaches hate mental mistakes. This is a mental mistake. That ball is five yards over top of his head. There's no way he's going to catch it. You do not hit him out of bounds. Now watch this ball. It's an out pattern. Watch how high the ball's not even in a picture. It's way over top. And look, you shove him out of bounds like that. 
That goes from third down and 10. That goes to first down. Orlando Waters is a sophomore, former high school All-American from Aniston, Alabama. Stakes have cost the Longhorns today, but that, Boy, that might is, equalize everything. It certainly might. That was going to be third down and 10 on about the 38-yard line, and now it's first down and 10 on the 28. Macklemore, the man in motion. On the draw, play Brown, and Darwin Ireland closed quickly. When Brown first got that handoff, he had some room. The boy, Ireland got there before he could make his cut up field. And he might have picked up one. 5.43 in the ball game. And remember, Ziegler has missed a field goal and just missed an extra point. If they can at all avoid it, Texas does not want to have to have this game come down to a field goal. Phil Brown. Didn't start the football game. It's been hurt, questionable all week, but Mick Thomas slides along that line and makes a huge tackle. Great down-the-line pursuit and just steps up and smacks him down. They're back in that third down and 10 situation. Listen to this crowd now on third and nine. Gardere hit Allen Luther between the numbers, but flags are down, and Turk McDonald is down for Texas. We've got all kinds of things to sort out on this one. Hey, Allen Luther was open. Got to say that. I saw one official. He looked like he signaled delay of game. I don't think the 25-second clock was down. Dead ball. Delay of game, offense. Ouch. That will get you scratching your head. Well, Crow sent a blitz that time, and they got in Gardner's face to the point that he threw to his tackle. That may be a lucky play for Texas because they get it over again. But they need 14 now. down. He's to the Arkansas 22. Waters in Ireland on the tackle. Clock rolls. 4.15 to play. And on comes the field goal unit for Texas. And it's not going to be Jason Ziegler who just missed the extra point. It's going to be Jason Post who was one for two against the Sooners. Hit a 30-yarder last week. This one from 39. enough leg, but he hooked it. This Southwest Conference race may be decided by missed field goals. It stung Baylor last week. It has hurt the horns today. We're back after this from Southwest Airlines. A missed field goals, a missed extra point, and a Texas team that traditionally is as good as any in the nation in the kicking game may lose this game because of the kicking game. Well, David McWilliams told us that he had to bring four kickers. He brought three field goal kickers and one punter. That's probably the reason why he can't seem to settle on any one. 
So with 3.45 remaining, Arkansas will try to run the rest of the clock down. Allen wrapped up. There's Lance Wilson again. In what was an average day best for Shane Drenette, Lance Wilson has starred since replacing Shane Drenette. And Allen loses three. It'll be second and 13. Clock rolls 327. Vanderbilt over Georgia. There are shockers all over today. And Drenette has not played since the kicking personal foul call. Nothing doing, third and long. Clock rolls at 3.02, each team with two timeouts. And another Lance Wilson tackle. Texas has outgained Arkansas 378 to 255 today. You don't think they're going to be pounding their fists in frustration if they don't find a way to pull this thing out? And Arkansas hasn't passed for a yard in this second half. Not a yard. This is the tight game. Texas has almost always found a way to win against Arkansas. They're running out of time here. Arkansas with Price to the 26, 221 and counting. Fans would have preferred a throw. The clock will stop on the Longhorn second timeout with 216 to play. They will get it back. But again, they'll have down to a field goal. Has two minutes and 16 seconds to sweat out. Pete Rather has been magnificent today. And he'll try to pin Brady Kavnis as deep as he can. This one, not quite like the others. But good coverage and Kavnis can only bring a 43-yard kick back, seven yards. Texas is 60 yards away, and they have two, seven, and one timeout. Don't forget, November 30th, coming your way. With TV set near you, the Dave Rowe All-Conference Team. The anticipation builds, my friend. There's some nominees from both Texas and Arkansas. Had not is the setback. Needs a block. And straining to pick up a couple before the Scott Long tackle brings him down. And we roll at 154 and counting. And are the Horns going to huddle here? Surely not. They won't. With only that one timeout remaining. A minute 45 and counting. Some confusion around the lone setback. And Duke hangs on to this one and has a first down at the Arkansas 44. They'll move the chains at 130. And Dave, that has been a really effective pass today for Gardere. All this is just a simple drive him off the line and button hook. And Duke has been open all day long because Arkansas has been giving him a cushion. Of course, he's dropped two or three of them. One of those on that last Texas drive might have gone for six. Bill Brown. Nick Thomas again. Boy, that was a great tackle by Thomas. Slide along the line, step right up, and I mean he wrapped him up. 107, 106 and counting. Second and 11. can possibly be heard calling signals at the line. Open, Kenny Neal drops it at the 29. Drops it. It should be emphasized. That ball was a perfectly thrown ball. A little bit low, but when he made the curl, it was right there. Neal should have had this ball easily on the 29-yard line. This is just a simple curl pattern. Watch down here at the bottom. You just run down and curl right there on the 30. Look at the ball. A little bit low, but very, very catchable. Nick Williams looking down for the catches and Walker. Nowhere to be found. Gardner has to scramble. Henry Ford, another sack with 25 seconds 
to play. The clock rolls. Well, now time. stopped at 40 seconds. Texas will use their final timeout, and what a day for Henry Ford, the sophomore from Fort Worth. Well, there's no way Gardner's going to be able to be heard on this last play. The pocket just collapses around him. He steps up. Now he's got time, but no one is open. Now there's the pressure up the middle to flush him, and there comes Ford from the side, and down he goes. Ford down, 14 yards to go. That is a coverage sack all the way. Absolutely. When you get coverage like that, downfield gives those defensive linemen that little extra time to get there. Texas to celebrate. And that long drought, 19 seconds from ending. 